Chichi, happy new year 2024 mayor's office back on air two four two, two legit four. do you remember too legit to quit too was, legit to quit yeah that was uh, mc too hammer legit. too legit too legit to quit yeah that was good <laughs> oh my i love Dude. MC hammer. hey but how about bad the boy, how about bad boy for oakland right oakland yeah yeah bad boy for oakland yeah legit yeah. what are we gonna say Dude, how about how about the last day of uh the last day of um of the year was one two three one two three it won't happen again for another hundred years oh and i missed that 12 31 23. wow isn't that cool one two three one two three i always love that stuff yeah i know me too dude do you know do you know okay listen to this my just out of nowhere jess's aunt lois her her green aunt on her dad's side was a numerologist dude like what a numerologist so there's different types of psychics. This is a true story. There's different types of psychics. Some, uh, you know, they see things, they hear, yeah. things, whatever. She was a like a psychic through numbers, like certified. Like the, right. we have a book upstairs where she was like one of the top uh, certified numerologists. And numbers mean like everything meant everything. Yeah. I know. Pretty crazy. Well, no, dude, numbers meant everything. Like you even go back to the Bible, the number like 14, 7. That's why 11, you know. All that stuff. Means. Wow, we're starting deep in 2024. This is it's no- true, though. It's true, dude. Uh, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty cool, though. I love that. Yeah. What'd you do for New Year's, by the way? Well, I was uh, not much. Sarah and I were just hanging out. We're yeah. watching this new show. Mm-hmm. It's not new. I think it's been on, but the Lawmen Bass Reeves on Paramount. You watching that? I will. What is dude, it, dude? It's it's good. It's good. It's it's that Taylor Sheridan again, the guy that did Yellowstone. Oh, he's got another show guy. he's got 48 shows on tv right now but <laughs> but it, it's actually it's actually really good it's like it's like 1869 uh you know it just goes back to like those times dude it's like you it, love those times that's well like it just brings game. you back yeah like 1869 dude i feel like i feel like my spirit uh you know i was reincarnated oh. back then i was like the sheriff or something i was lawman sean casey <laughs> Hey, Sean Casey, law like <laughs> Sheriff Sean Casey. I was like Sheriff Sean right? Casey, but dude, you know what? You know what you realize when you watch this show, mm-hmm. there were no laws, dude. So you have oh, like yeah. you have the lawman Bass Reeves. This guy comes to town. I'm like, all right, let's kill him. Yeah, and I was like, what? To a fight back then, yeah. you shoot you. You just it was the Wild Wild West. That's what they called it. That I, dude, I love. Remember uh, what was it? Young Guns, dude? The Young Guns movie. Oh man, great movie. Two of my favorites. Two of my favorites. Wyatt Herb, Wyatt Herb. Wyatt Herb. Or, wait, or, or, so no, Tombstone, dude. Tombstone. Dude, Tombstone. Dude, forget that's, about it. Dude, that's I'm your Huckleberry. Val Kilmer's character in that. Bro. Is, it might be my number one favorite character of all time. I'm not kidding. Yeah. What was what was his name again? What? There was Wyatt Herb. There was... uh. I'm your Come on. He was... Doc uh, Holliday. Doc Holliday. Doc Holliday. Doc Holliday. Oh, clean it up. That's what you always say to him. Clean it up. Clean it up. <laughs> Nobody comes back. That's when he's like, I'm your, I'm your Huckleberry. How about uh? When I think like, he might have had a drinking problem though. I think his liver shut oh, down at the he, end. Yeah, his liver shut down big time, and he had polio or whatever. <clears> yeah. got back then. Imagine like you just. But let's not go too far into this. I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna tell you what I was gonna. What I did on the New Year's. Yeah, what'd you do? Well, I want to tell you really quick. Oh, yeah. I didn't. Fit, I watched Lawman Bass Reeves. This is what I was saying. Law, oh, okay. Watched Lawman Bass Reeves, <laughs> and then I was gonna go to bed, and then my son Andrew came over mm. at like ten forty-five. So I'm like. He's only home for another couple more days. So I'm like, I got to stay up with him. So anyway, I stay up about 1130. He's like, dad, I'm going to head out. I'm going to go, you know, he's going to pick up, you know, a couple people at a party. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, well, I'm going to bed. So I go upstairs. I'm laying in bed at like 1145, about to go to bed. And, I'm, and I look at Sarah. I'm like, let's grind it out for 16 more minutes. All right. <laughs> so we stayed up. <laughs> stayed up. She stayed up. I text my kids and went to bed like 1210. I was sawing logs. Nice. Dude. What'd you guys do? Billy Joel, UBS Arena, Long Island, dude. Dude, that's a New Year's. It was a New Year's. And Jess, I gotta give her credit. She's so good at getting tickets and stuff. (laughs) 
Yo, Billy, oh, I'm not. I'm not going to say my secret. Does she have the connections, Jess? Uh, well, she's about to. Well, yeah. dude, there's summer concerts at at City Field. Green, you want to see Green Day this summer? We might go do that. Yeah, I'll beat her. Uh, they, <laughs> I'll beat her. dude, there's there's tons of uh, food fighters. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, I love the food fighters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll talk about that when we get closer to summer. But uh, she got tickets in this area where there, I, we have a secret about going to Billy Joel concerts that I'm not. We're not. We don't give away because we don't want anybody to know about it. But it's it's a certain area where you get certain seats. Dude, this arena is freaking 18 minutes without traffic from our house the seat she got and where she got the parking you know concert ends he's standing waving goodbye we walked outside got to our car and we're the first car out of the parking lot on New what? Year's Eve. you didn't hit it no traffic without from the second the last note played to when we walked in the house 28 minutes to oh my God. from a concert that's incredible Billy Joel right New Year's on Long Island sold out oh absolutely sold out it was nuts he's great man he's so dude great. I don't ever ever <laughs> and one more time ever stayed till the last song Yo, you I, don't. I took my daughter yeah, to Taylor Swift I said we're leaving you I go find out the playlist uh -huh. we're gonna go I'm, I'm gonna have to take out a second workers to go but we're gonna go <laughs> But yeah. I need to know when that third to the last song hits, we're out of here. That's the you get deal. That stress. You get that That's the deal. So, dude, we're out of. We were the first car. You know, we were we were gone. <laughs> but I don't ever stay to the last song, dude. That's that's incredible. Unless it's Pearl Jam. Well, of course. Well, yeah. And then you're going to have You're going to hang out yeah, afterwards. You know. Hey, we're hanging out with Pete Corriale in a few weeks, dude. Let's go, Pete. Get ready, baby. We got second uh, row, Chinch. I know, yeah. Oh, great. oh dude. Paramount, dude. Coriel, he's the best. He's the best. Dude, he's doing well, man. Those tickets aren't cheap these days. I'm proud I of him. I know. Hey, Pete, well, ne next time we'll call him, or, you know, yeah. next time we got to call him the favor. Like, <laughs> when he starts touring with Maniscalco, we'll be like, hey, listen, oh, bro, we need yeah. uh, four seats. Yeah, Good yeah, ones, there too. Go. There you go. Um, <clears throat> all right, anyway, so we do have baseball news. Well, huh, not the greatest baseball news for one future Hall of Famer. Dude, Big Poppy. First of all, congratulations. He's about to have another kid. However, Big Poppy, gender reveal, Sean. You played with this guy. He's a pretty good hitter. Yeah. He swung and missed on the gender <laughs> reveal ball. <laughs> Luckily, they had a whole setup where they just still popped the thing. I believe it was a boy. It was blue. Dude. Dude, your boy. That's your boy. Talk to your boy right uh, now. Pop. Uh, I just want to say, bro, let's go. First off, congratulations. That's incredible. Another boy. But second off, you are now like the guys on the, uh, you know, the, on the on the uh, social media where the you know the guy falls over, the wife yeah. tosses him one, he freaking misses, it lands on the ground, doesn't break. People are like, what the hell is going on here? Now, Big Poppy, one of the greatest left-handed hitters, Cooperstown, takes a full hack and almost goes down. <laughs> I said it to you last night. Dude, oh, he swings and misses. Talk about this lesson tomorrow. <laughs> Did you see what happened? Poppy swings and misses, yeah. and then the confetti comes flying out. And, and he like he didn't chase the ball to pretend like it's almost like he was trying to. Like we got the video, Poppy. We saw. Yeah. Well, he, he picked it fell down too. He took one of those like poppy hacks. We yeah, he, dude, he, his back. I think his, his lower a C four, <laughs> C five neck, and then his L one, L two transverse process is broke. <laughs> That's Dude, sweet. and then he went and grabbed the ball. I think he soft tossed it to himself. And took another rip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Pop, congratulations on the baby. Get yourself in the cages as soon as you can. Get off that tee. You know, for the next kid, make sure you're down and through the ball, brother. Down and through the ball. For the next kid, make sure you're down and through the ball. That, that can mean a couple different things, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, let's, let's, yeah, let's get away from there, Chinch. Yeah, <laughs> um, all right, speaking of uh, staying with the Red Sox team, they got rid of a guy who didn't fully work out there, but now he's going to Atlanta, and that's Chris Sale. It's a very interesting move, and I don't hate it for the Braves. I think it was – I don't hate it for either team because mm. I don't think it was really – I don't think it ever really fully worked out for sale in Boston, not for lack of effort. I think just more for injury, but what's your take on this guy? Well, you know, I think obviously if sale comes back, I mean, he came back last year and he's, when he's been healthy, he has pitched well, um, has some ups and downs, but I think Alex Anthopoulos 
sees, you know, so when, when did he get, he got Tommy John surgery in 2020, mm-hmm. had the rib cage fracture, right wrist during 2022. He's really been banged up. Yeah. He totaled just 11 starts from 20 to 22. So he's, he's been banged up. He posted a 4.30 ERA over 20 starts. He's mm-hmm. been on the show with stress fractures. Yeah. yeah. So last year he got 20 starts. Had a 3.92 ERA in the nine starts he made after returning from the IL in August. I think that's what they're looking at. Yeah, I'll, it's that it's, number right there. 3.92 nine starts. I mean, Sales got electric stuff. Doesn't have to be the man in 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 Atlanta right. to kind of just settle into that rotation, you know, hide in the background, but also be a big cog. So that could be a this could be a big move for the Braves, obviously in that rotation. Yeah. But I think they gave up a great player in Vaughn Grissom. You I mean, like this that. kid's an absolute stud. Yeah, he's an absolute stud. Um, they really had just had no no spot for him. They just couldn't find a spot for him at the end of the day. This guy's a big time leader too. Um, you know, I think uh, I think that's a, it was a good pickup for both teams. I think this is going to be something yeah. that works out in both ways, and it could at the end of the day <clears throat> work out for the uh, for the Red Sox in the long run. Grissom's number seven prospect in 2022, but was up there a lot of the year last year. Um, This kid is just a good, good man. uh, In two, in the Red Sox give up Grissom regular playing time. The 22 year old infielder who hit 330 with a 921 OPS for Triple A last past Mm. season. He's currently playing in Puerto Rico. He's going to play probably a little left field there. But and and they also say about him, you're not going to find a better human being. Anthopolis said. Mm The makeup's as good as it gets. He's a high energy guy who makes people around him better. So don't sleep on this name that's kind of thrown in. We know sales going to Braves, but Vaughn Grissom, this kid can hit and he's a stud athlete and he's a big dude. And obviously he's a leader. So this could be a trade in the long run. Sales 34, Grissom's in his early 20s. This could be a trade you look back and go, wow, turned out to be a good one for the Red Sox. Good analysis. Good deep dive there. I like that. All right, let's stick with this kind of theme there's another guy out there you mentioned it this morning and i was like yes because i've been reading about him too dude jd martinez is out there there's a there are teams that are very interested in him specifically the mets and the angels yeah like dude i didn't realize how strong of a season this guy had last year 113 games in in a at 35 years old he hit 33 home runs. Drove yeah, wait, how many three. how many games? 113 games? 113 games. He had, he was 271, 321, 572 slash line. And his hard hit rate shit, whatever you guys yeah. do with that stuff, was big time. Like one of the one of the best in the league. And and you say he had over 30 home runs. He hit 33 home runs in 113 games with okay. 103 runs. Dude, and in LA, dude. I'm just saying. Mm. That is not a great place to hit homers. So you're putting up those kind of numbers. Somebody out there who lands J.D. Martinez, and I know, you know, Arizona's been talking about him and a couple other teams, but this guy's a stud. He knows how to hit. He's a guy that's going to hit forever. He's like like a big poppy kind of guy. I really Mm -hmm. feel that way. Like, big poppy was still on top at the end of his career. J.D. Martinez is just a guy. He's not going to play the field for you. With the DH being league-wide now in both leagues, he brings so much value. Those numbers you just said, 113 games, over 30 home runs, almost a 900 OPS. I mean, this guy is is still a formidable threat, a game-changing bat. So, J.D. Martinez not getting a ton of love, like maybe in the media, but like when you look at those numbers, you go, no, the GMs are on that. They're not over just overlooking that. Also, Chinchy. Also, a guy like Justin Turner, dude. Yes, I got a chance to see him firsthand a couple times Um, this year when we, you know, was with the Yankees. We played the Red Sox twice. Bro, still has one of the slowest heartbeats in the game. Still goes to right center with authority. Doesn't strike out. Puts together a great at bat. Like the ultimate professional. If you're going to talk about the ultimate professional in baseball right now, Justin Turner pops up. Man, the guy is just a winner. He uh, can DH, still play a little third base. Teammates always love him. Like and he's teammates always love like him. Right great, in the middle yeah. of the mix with great teammates. So that's another guy I see, and I go, man, Justin Turner's like, I know we're talking Bellinger, and that's the big one right now, and maybe right. a little Matt Chapman. Right. But who's going to be a nice sign, you know? 
the two guys we just mentioned yeah and you're gonna get him a little you're definitely gonna get him cheaper somehow than than the other two guys you just mentioned here's turner's numbers last year quiet justin turner numbers yeah. 276 23 bombs 96 ribbies right one doubles and a 345 on base percentage for a guy who slugs like dude that's what i'm good, saying man. now it's yeah it's interesting dude i would get how about you? you could get both of those guys for the price that uh people are talking about for bellinger well uh, close i oh, mean dude 70 percent of it like well what i agree dude and what what about a guy like reese hoskins sitting out there how about that yeah i mean reese hoskins you know was out last year with the acl but dude yeah. this guy was a stud for the phillies all those years and i almost feel like getting better with age so mm -hmm. he's sitting out there so lair's sitting out there with uh mm -hmm. put up some you know big numbers uh teoscar hernandez yeah. Has more left in the tank, dude. I mean, you go back to the Blue Jays, Ty Oscar Hernandez. He was okay in Seattle, but right. with Toronto, this guy's one of the best home run guys out there. Adam Duvall, mm -hmm. you know, RBI mm -hmm. machine out there. So there's still some good players sitting there. My man, Harrison Bader, Michael yeah. Taylor, who were just, <clears throat> you talk about game changing uh, center fielders. I mean, those guys are game changing center fielders. They could change the game just on their defense alone. So there's some good players sitting out there, bro. There are, but it's time to sign, isn't it? I mean, yeah. hopefully today there's some action. I, I'd have to think after the first of the year, these teams are going to start, you know, locking down to some of these guys and really go, really, really start putting some, uh, putting some uh, contracts together and getting these metal, guys, metal. you know. Yeah. I also, too, do you see Jock Peterson is a big name? I don't know, you know. Obviously, it, it, it says the Blue Jays. That makes sense because right. Brandon Belt was a nice fit for them last year at DH. I mean, Belt almost had. Uh, you know, mid range, 800 OPS. Uh, he was really good. So, I mean, I mean, you got Jock Peterson sitting out there. You still got Brandon Belt out there. Yeah. Um, there's still some good, good players, dude. It's not just Bellinger. I mean, there's some players I out agree. there that are, that are putting up some numbers. Yeah. I think if you're creative, you can I, I, also, that's the thing. Like, again, there's, they're not bank breaker. So you can maybe right. all of all the, those guys you just named, you get like two of them. And you can plug holes in the lineup big time. If what would the Mets look like with JD Martinez in between uh uh the polar bear and uh the, uh, the shortstop? Yeah, Lindor. Lindor. <laughs> that would be a great sign, dude. JD that? Martinez. That'd be great. Or, what about, or what about a, for them? What about a Justin Turner back to the Mets to finish it off where yeah, where, where he started? You know? Man. Well, he yeah. began in Baltimore, then went oh, to the Mets, true. but you know, you oh, stalled with the but Mets. Made a name for himself, dude. It's an, Justin Turner's an incredible story as far as like goes to the Mets, go, Orioles, then to the Mets. Kind of scuffles, doesn't do that well. Changed his and swing, right? Changed his swing, swing, dude. Yeah, changed his swing. Was like, it a leg kick? I think in the off season. Yeah, no, not not really a leg kick. Just yeah, more of more of like slower movement forward. You know, just getting through the baseball, but slow. You know, and just and, and and catching the ball out front. He was like, I got to mm. catch the ball out front more. Change his career because he started getting the ball in the air a little more. Right. But, you know, dude, I just, like I said, man, when you play against Justin Turner to, to a man, yeah. all the guys that are in this league, when you when you play against Justin Turner, you're like, wow, he's going to put together a great at bat. Uh -huh. He's going to battle his butt off. Like I said, man, that, that's going to be a great sign for somebody, like a sneaky yeah. good sign. Wait, like I, you said, I, you're going to get value. You're going to get right, value from these right. guys. If you don't have $200 million to pay Bellinger, which I don't know how many teams are in it. I mean, I really think it's the Cubs are the bidding against themselves maybe at this mm -hmm. point, or mm -hmm. the Giants. Right. But at the end of the day, um, you know, do you want that? You know, Bellinger, the thing about Bellinger is he's young. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he's got a, a, a track record. But it's, these guys have track records. They're a little older, but you can get still big value for them with the numbers they're putting up. I like that. Oh, I just came across a really cool quote from Justin Turner about his swing. This is cool. This is good from a, a swing doctor like yourself. This person says, do you see hitting as more of an art or more of a science? Here's his answer. I want to get your reaction to this. From Turner, honestly, I think it's both. When you're talking about the mechanics of the swing and a position you're trying to get in, there is definitely science involved. You need to understand how your body works or... If you're working with someone else, understanding how their body works in order to get into the best position to have constant, uh, consistent su success. Then when you're in a box, you have that cat and mouse game with the pitcher. You're going to face three or four times. 
How is he going to attack you? How is he going to approach you? That's more of an art of hitting. What you, what's your take on Dude, that? Dude, what a great answer. What a great answer because I think the science of hitting is what he said. You have to get your body. You have to do the – here's the thing. you got to do the reps. You know, this is a skill. Mm-hmm. And anything that's a skill, you got to put in the time. you got to put in the discipline. You have to make sure that you're showing up every single day to make that skill so good that when you get in the box, and this is why these guys are big leaguers, when you get in the box, now the art form of the cat and mouse competition, one-on-one, he's on an island, he stands alone, you stand alone. Your reps of skill, your reps of discipline, your reps showing up for yourself, getting in that confidence cage, building all the mental skills you need to get in that box, now you're ready to compete. Now I got to say, what am I doing here? I got to push them up, push them out. You know, a lot of times in the, in, the, in the big leagues, you know, that inside pitch is not a great pitch to hit. The one that's in, you know, the black in. Mm. You know, and so I would say, guys, hey, let that one go until maybe two strikes when you can fight. Or the one that leaks over the plate that's middle in, that's mm. out over the plate, that's a good one to drive. But a lot of times at the big league level, you got to push a guy up and push him out. Make sure your vision's out over the plate. Make sure your direction is the opposite field gap. Now, that doesn't mean you're going to hit it there, but directionally, your path wants to be there and sets up there. So then you have that thought process. Yes, 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 I'm swinging till my eyes tell me no. I'm hunting the fastball, right, out over the plate. Anything that comes up with a, with a, with a hump on it early is probably a breaking ball up. The change up out of his hands, you're looking for you're looking for everything up in that area. So you gotta have patience, you gotta have discipline, and you gotta have confidence, right? And you also have to think to yourself, I was saying this the other day, and this is a good this is a good way to kind of wrap a bow around this. Right. You know, we were talking about breakthrough pro. The first week in breakthrough pro, we talk about gratitude. And everyone, you know, we we you know, the biggest thing about gratitude in the brain is fear lives in the amygdala, gratitude lives in the prefrontal cortex. In your brain, the brain can't process both at the same time. So you're either going to live in one or the other, right? In baseball, when it's such a game of failure, you've got to find a way to get to that prefrontal cortex or the fear of failure, the fear of the crowd, the fear of the elements, it'll overwhelm you. So these guys work, and they may not understand the science behind it, but they work hard to get to that prefrontal cortex. Hmm. So I think back to this. There's a big study now out on athletes about gratitude. And what they found was athletes that are grateful are more resilient. And why this is important is this, Chinch. You've played and you understand this thought process of having fear in the box when you struggle and you Mm -hmm. don't feel confident and all that stuff. So the resiliency means when you're resilient and you're you're grateful and it brings resiliency, you look at – you look at – things in the box or things in life as opportunities and i go back to bryce harper's big three-run home run a couple years ago and they asked him hey bryce what was it about that three-run home run what were you thinking when you were going up to the box and you know you know what he said Mm -hmm. he goes you know what as i was walking up the box i just thought how grateful i am for this opportunity how grateful i am i'm in this situation and then there he goes out and performs because gratitude means no matter what so whether you get a home run or you punch out, if you look at life and, and, and baseball in that moment as an opportunity, your chances of success go way up, hmm. right? And so that's, that's a huge part of this. So you talk about the art of the mind games, the art of the mental toughness, the art of the battle, one-on-one battle mentally. Man, I tell you what, if you show up in gratitude, the research says, now we go back to science, the science says, you are a more resilient athlete. You are a more resilient human hmm. when you show up in gratitude. Thus, things become opportunities and not not circumstances where you're scared. Because right. think of the difference. If it's an opportunity, oh, man, bases loaded, game on the line. Thank you so much. This is absolutely incredible <laughs> that I get this chance to hit in front of 45,000 people. I get a chance to go one-on-one. I get a chance to showcase my skills, the eye-hand coordination that I have, that I practice on my own night in, night, night in and night out, right? As opposed to, oh, my God, 40,000 people. Yeah. I hope I don't strike out. Yeah. I hope I don't look bad i hope i don't uh swing and miss at a change up i hope i get a hit here it's over johnny it's over 
right? So at the end of the day, that gratitude doesn't just build joy and peacefulness and compassion, all that stuff that you have when you get that, that feeling of thankfulness, it also builds resiliency. Interesting. And when you are resilient, you are dangerous. Yeah. You are it goes, dangerous. It goes for defense. That's amazing. It goes for defense too, right? Like, don't I don't I can't make an error on this play. You're gonna make an error on that play. Guaranteed. And the ball's you coming. You were no hitters. You were no hitters, dude. You're dude, you probably. Dude, I remember when Justin Verlander, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me. First no hitter. I remember towards the end of that game, thinking to myself, "Hit the ball to me." Hits the ball. If you hit me the next nine balls, Justin Verlander is going to have a no hitter. Yes. Like in the seventh, I'm like, hit every ball to me. This is over. That's and right. it's a great feeling to have. But, but I tell you what, you only get to that feeling by every day during BP, I'm taking 65, 70 right. balls, 20 to my right, 20 to my left, 20 at me. I'm doing 10 throws every day. I'm working on coming off the base. I'm working on the, the throw from behind. I'm working on all that stuff. So, the confidence I had in myself as a defender when a situation comes up where history is on the line and your buddy Justin Verler is on the mound about to make history and you're saying, hey, hit the ball to me because if you do, you're going to get this no-hitter. It's a cool place to be. It's a great place to feel. Yeah, it is. I love it. I love it. And by the way, we're sponsored by Breakthrough Pro all week long this week and we're going to have the uh, – I'm going to have uh, the code to to subscribe to it in, in our uh, little blurb uh yes the video and audio link so click on it yes Even if you, you heard sean talk about it but you take, click on it and learn about it and join it well sure. dude you know what you know what it is it's also the it's like it's mental health stuff mental health yeah. stuff mental toughness stuff whatever you want to call it whatever that whatever the category is it's great stuff man and it's and, and i'm excited about it and i'd love some of our listeners to go check out the link and sign up and join us uh coming next uh january 7th we launch do it. Stu's going to join. Look, Stu. 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 Love it. <laughs> oh, he's, oh, he's attacking. You know, <laughs> Stu's right. attacking. Stu's All right, attacking. Dude, so let's, uh, let's end on a high note. You're start, we're starting 2024. Very excited. We got our Gratitude, ass. baby. Gratitude. We're, 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 ta- we're talking with resilience, yeah. and we're talking with joy and all that stuff. Change 2024 mayor's office to the moon, baby. Let's go. And by the way, the, here's your New Year's resolutions, everybody. Hit the like and subscribe buttons. Yes. The mayor's office, for Christ's sake. We we know 80% of you aren't doing that. So we're just saying the 80-20 rule. Let's flip it. We don't want 20% not, 20% hitting, 80% not. We want 80% hitting subscribe, download. 20% don't. Yeah, you think we're doing this for our health? I'm worried. No, look how sick I am. You see my nose is all red and everything. We grind this out every day for you people. At least you can do is give a little back so we can pay for these expensive Pete Coriali tickets. <laughs> Christ <laughs> sake. Coriali, we need some we need some tickets, bro. Mayor's <laughs> office is grinding. We, we 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 don't have a sponsor yet. We're working nice. on it. All right, bro. All right, JJ. So hey man. Great show today, bro. I yeah. love you. What do you got going on today, Annie? I'm just sitting here with Stu's attacking me right now. Uh, doing a little football stuff, man. A lot of NFL action. Crazy. Oh, dude. Bills and, and are... dude, dude, really quick. Yeah, go, go, go. What about the what games last game? night? We forgot to touch on that. Sick games. Both just games saying. were awesome. Dude, Michigan Both. figuring it out. No T. That was incredible. And also, dude, I hate to say it, bro. The, I know FSU was mad they didn't get in and all that stuff, but they got lost 63-3 to to Georgia. I know. Hey, it, it always plays out. It plays yeah, out. I mean, like, you can't you can't win in that in that whole concept of that. Because they're like, right? Oh, it should expand to ten teams. Well, guess what? Then next year, eleven and twelve that don't yeah. make it. Yeah, it's the same kind. Just whatever. It's going to be twelve teams next year, right? I think. I yeah, think I mean, they, yeah. they're going to wind up. It's going to turn into the NCAA. Basketball. Yeah, thirteen, fourteen will be pissed. Everyone's yeah. going to be. Pissed. Somebody's <laughs> always going to be pissed. You know? Yeah. You know, what is it? The girl that doesn't get to. Uh, the guy doesn't doesn't get a girl to dance with him at at, at the high school dance. He's always going to be upset, you know. Yeah. There's only fifteen guys, fourteen girls. Exactly. Not everyone, win, everyone can win, dude. Not everyone can win. You know what I mean? That was a terrible analogy. Let's That's understand. terrible, terrible analogy. But I understand what you're saying. <laughs> I got some distracted, Stu. Stu, Stu's in your face. And also, kudos to Washington too, pulling it off against Texas. Dude, at the Washington's end, so. legit. I'm looking forward to that game, man. Hey, by the way, it could be Harbaugh's last game. He could be going to the uh, the pros. What? Yeah. Going where? To the big leagues, dude. To the NFL? Yeah, dude. He there? He's going to get offered like twenty million dollars a year to go to the NFL. Dude, I bet you. I bet you Michigan would match it. 
dude, there's a logic that Michigan is bigger than some NFL. Team. Yeah, dude. Yeah, and also, too, is. he's dude, he's also impacting kids. Right. And I love what he says to his dad. You say, who's got it better than us? Nobody. Did you see that? <laughs> who's got it better than us? Yeah. Nobody. I love that. Talk about what a great family. Yeah. yeah, great dude. Nice. All right. All right. All right bro. I got I you. Go. See you tomorrow, brother. I'm just fired up to be back with you. I can talk all day. What the hell's going on? <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Happy New Year 2024 to the moon. Stu, to the moon, brother. See you tomorrow. <laughs>